Yeah? And a healer is not somebody who has a practice, who sees people, or is a doctor. It's not necessarily that. A healer could be the person whom your entire family and all your friends go to when you, they have a problem. <laughs> right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it comes out in different forms. It comes out in the way a person, for example, would create an environment around themselves which is highly supportive of others and themselves, too. So if you have a family, you have a place that's supportive and nurturing for your family. Or even your own, if you live on your own, your place is where you come in and it's supportive. What has happened a lot of times is that the individual gets disconnected from that capacity and ability through culture, teachings, you have to go to college and become an accountant or a math teacher or... I'm not saying that, that those individuals are disconnected, but it could happen. I mean, I'm saying it because it happened to my mother. <laughs> right? She was a healer and she wanted to be a doctor. But she came from a very, very poor family. She was very intelligent, so she got um, one of these uh, grants to go to university in Chile in the 1950s. Right? Um, but they said, OK, the grant is limited, so what do you want to do? She said, I want to be a doctor, you know, I want to heal people. She said, oh, I'm sorry, it doesn't cover that. <laughs> Why don't you learn maths instead, mathematics? and become a teacher, because mathematics, you could always get a job. If you learn mathemat mathematics, you'll always have a job. And no matter where you are in the world, they're, so, they're always short of maths teachers. He says, why don't you just put your hands on them when we were little, if anything happened to us, you put your hand on us, and you went away. She said, yeah, but that was psychological, that was your mother. She says, mom, that wasn't psychological. And she started living the life of a healer. And her environment changed. She was, before she started learning homeopathy, her house was a mess, right? And she didn't, she was, she would say herself, I'm too lazy to clean up, right? So the dishes would be dirty and the floor wouldn't be um, brushed or vacuumed, the bed wouldn't be made, or, and her books and stuff everywhere, her clothes everywhere. She was like a teenager when you went into her house, you know? And I was like the opposite, I was super tidy. <laughs> so it's like I would come in like this, you know, I couldn't look at it. When she started embodying and accepting her essence and the frequency and vibration of that energy of healing, she suddenly turned tidy. I went to see her and everything was beautiful and clean and decluttered and I was like, whoa, what happened here? You're extremely powerful, and actually, you can dictate where your life goes. And it's not complicated, it's quite simple. Most of us have been taught not to show ourselves, to be invisible. A lot of us might be afraid to be visible. When I was asked to go public, I, I was a little bit afraid. Not just because um, I, I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know what to do and what that even meant, but also because I thought I was going to be attacked or killed or my, my children harmed, right? I had all these fears. So I looked at them and I processed them. And I thought, okay, it's cool. And I thought about my children, especially the little one, because he, I received a threat against my child, right, my little boy. And, um, and I thought, I looked at my little baby, and at the time he was, what, 2010? He was four years old. So he was a tiny little four-year-old, super sweet. And at first I thought, oh no, they're going to hurt my baby if I go public, you know? They're going to hurt him. This is what I started going, I'm a mother, you know? And, and even any little children, if you think somebody's going to harm a child, you will do anything to stop that, right? And then I looked at him, and he looked at me, 
And I said, hold on a minute. Are you really going to play that game in this life? That are you really here to manipulate me, to be silent and invisible? Is that what you were born to me? Of course, he's a four-year-old. He didn't know what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> But his, I could sense from his higher self an answer. And the answer was, absolutely not. I'm here to have an experience with you of life, to enjoy each other's company, to share a life together, for you to be my mommy, and for me to be your son. That's what I came here to do. The other stuff, forget it, that's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not here for that. And those books are empowerment books, they're um, wake-up books, and they're teaching books, even though they're novels, right? <laughs> they're novels. Um, they really help. <laughs> and, um, and I get to meet amazing individuals and beings and people, and it's really cool. So, oh, yeah, that's, I'm going to retire to write my books. So that was the next stage, yeah? And then somebody pointed out, I don't remember who it was, maybe you're even here, that the word retirement is very charged, and it's like an end, that you're gone, and a lot of people actually die after they retire. It happens all over the world. A person works their entire life, retires, a week later they're dead. Yeah? So, oh, so I must still carry that a little bit. So, the latest decision is that I'm not going to retire, I'm going to change jobs. <laughs> so you're going to fire me, thank you very much. <laughs> you have to say you're fired. Thank you. <laughs> And one of the fascinating things was that the earth, where there was earth and plants and animals, like, there, there were no cities, there were no roads. They were like little villages or little houses, homesteads of families by themselves, or little groups of individuals, working, um, growing food and working with the animals and just being there because they loved it, and that was a choice. But it wasn't that many that lived on land. The majority of individuals lived in these massive ships that floated on the ocean. And it was technologically super advanced. And I know we have that technology here, but it hasn't been released, you know? I can feel it, I can sense it, I can tap into it, I know it's around us. <laughs> and. Um, And each individual would choose where they would go and live, whether they wanted to be on the land or not. But they were very, very different. And, um, and I thought, well, you know, it's like, how does, why are they so separated, or why are they so... They don't really mix very much. Even though everybody has the free choice of going wherever their passion takes them, they don't seem to mix very much. They seem to stick around in the areas that they like. The other word that I like to use, because it's simple, or it can be simple, is integrity. Moment to moment, to be within integrity. What does that even mean? I think the word integrity has been hijacked a lot. People use it for all sorts of reasons, and they put meaning into it. But to me, integrity is the bits, it's, it's the moments in life that nothing takes away from you, right? Bits are not being taken out of you. I know, for example, that when I tell a lie, and even if it's a tiny little lie, I feel something dissonant in my field, in my body. My body hates it. And it's almost like I lose a little bit of myself in it. Almost like my frequency goes lower a little bit, right? Every time I tell a lie, and even if it's, oh, um, how did you like your dinner? And the person's smiling at you, did you like your dinner? And you go, oh, God, I hated it. <laughs> it was really good, <laughs> you know? It's simple, I mean, it's not like serious stuff, 
Most of the little lies that we tell are very simple, and it's always to make somebody feel happier or nicer, right? And so, to stay within integrity, um, I would like the person is smiling and everything. It's like I, I really love your place and everything, but it's not really something I would normally eat. So. I left it, <laughs> right? Rather than say, "Yeah, it's great, but I'm too full now. I can't eat anymore." So, for example, um, you could be at work, right? And there's a situation happening um, where you know you might hear somebody complaining about somebody else in the office, and they go, "No, no, 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 complain, 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 complain." And you know, you don't really like the person they're talking about yourself. What you could do is add to that reality and start complaining about that person too. Yeah, I know, they're so nasty. And did you know that, they, that he picks his nose and then puts it on the desk? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you could totally add to it. You're putting in your energy, your emotions, and you feel satisfied because you know, other people feel the same way that you do. Um, and you're creating a, a situation and adding to the reality where this person is not a very likable person, and the other people talk against him, against his bank. That's a reality creation right there. And you're adding your energy to it. You could go the highway and think, well, actually, you know, I'm not going to add my energy to that. And um, you could say to yourself, even though I feel those things about that person, I don't think it's fair that those things are being said behind his back. So I'm not going to put my energy and add to that. And that's part of it, right? That's, there is already an improvement. You're not adding your energy to that creation to the same degree. However, you're not withdrawing your energy, you're still feeling those things about that person. So, the next step would be for you to look at the way that you feel about that person, see what energies that person creates in you. If he's picking his nose, you might be disgusted. It's like, yeah, that's disgusting. So we're disgusting, where are you in my body? You know, and, and really process that disgusting energy. And maybe, in a kind and kind manner, you could go with a box of tissues and say, listen, you know, it's, it grosses me out when you do that. Would you mind, while I'm in the office, for you to use these tissues instead? And he might not even be aware that he was picking his nose. You know, it's like... It could be, it could go down that road. And those are stories too. So when you have a condition, it's how, how is it serving you? And it's like, because sometimes we get triggered when you think about a condition serving me, think about what does it allow you to do, what does it stop you doing? And then maybe decide to do those things anyway, whether you were healthy or not, right? You will do that anyway. Or how does you like it? Do you like it? You might want to drop it right now. You know, sometimes we had that experience, and then yeah, I'm done. Right? Like my my arm. You know, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want that anymore. I want to drop the stories, and I want to drop the server. The service. The service originally was to stop me obsessing over the music, to make me a broader person, less egotistical, <laughs> and um, it served. Right. And then it served in other ways, you know, it's like um, other people have to do a lot of the manual work, <laughs> like cleaning and stuff, because I can't, you know. 